I would now like to hand off the presentation to Heath Matthews, our Senior Vice President of Content and Licensing for Smart Music. Thanks, Michaela. Um, hello, everyone, and good morning. I am so excited to kick off the first ever, ever Smart Music Connect Virtual Summit. This is an honor for us, and we truly appreciate your participation in this event. Obviously, this last year has been a challenge to navigate the remote environment. But what is truly amazing is seeing educators going out of their way in a heroic effort to bring quality music education to students. And we hope with today's event that you can walk away with even more tools in your toolkit. There are many great sessions today, including panels on oral skills, jazz improvisation, virtual performances, smart music tips, sight reading, and many others. I just wanna say a special thanks to Michaela Graham, who you heard just a moment ago. She helped to coordinate everything you see here today. I also wanna take a moment to thank all the panel and session participants involved. This event is truly possible because of your commitment to music education and sharing your experiences. And I'd like to thank our publishing partners who year after year bring the highest level of educational content into the marketplace. They work to ensure you have access to this content in smart music. Please take a moment to visit their publisher pages when you have an opportunity. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the speaker for our opening session today. A veteran of 36 years in public school music education, Marsha Neal currently serves as president of Music Education Consultants, Inc., a consortium of music education professionals, which works with a variety of educational organizations and art associations and school districts to foster the growth and breadth of articulated music education programs for all children. In 2016, Marsha was named Senior Director of Education for Yamaha Corporation of America, and in this position, consults with numerous school districts to assist in the development of a variety of facets of their music education and arts education programs. She also serves as the education advisor to the Music Achievement Council, a nonprofit corporation whose main focus is professional development for instrumental educators to reach and serve more music students. We cannot even begin to cover the national recognition and awards Marsha has received over the years for her work in music education. And we are so excited to have her with us here today. Thank you, Marsha. Now I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Heath. I really do appreciate that. Such a very sweet and kind introduction. Um, I have been looking forward to this because this whole concept of um, going back to school is a new future for us. And so the, that movie title, Back to the future certainly does apply. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to get us started. So it'll take me just a second to do that and bring up uh, my, my uh, slideshow. But I wanted to ensure that um, we have this conversation. And this is more of a conversational kind of a session as opposed to, um, you know, here's some strategies for this, that, or the other thing. But um, I have found that the why of music education sometimes escapes us because even when pre-pandemic, you know, you get so hung up with your job of teaching and, and doing reports and taking attendance and all that kind of thing that the why of it can kind of get set aside. So we're going to talk and, and, and talk about the why today. And, and I'd like to tell you about a personal experience that I had that kind of reacquainted me with my why. And we all know who this is, Eric Whitaker, an amazing, amazing composer. I think of him as the Mozart of our time. But several years ago, um, I was at the NAMM show, which is held in Anaheim annually. And it's a, it's a National Association of Music Merchants. So this is where dealers from all over the United States gather annually to make their instrument purchases from the manufacturers for the coming year. Um, and then that way they have, you know, like a car dealership, they have instruments to offer when people come into the store and, and to, to you for your children. And um, so this on this particular year, every Saturday they do this, but on this particular year on the um, Saturday, they have a a meeting or a conference for music educators. It's a whole music education rally. And it's great because people come from all of Southern California and we all powwow and Yahoo for music ed. Well, 
Eric was the invited keynote speaker. And it was not only him speaking so articulately about his background in music education and, and all of that, but and how music has impacted him personally. But he also, at the end of his session, of uh, his speaking portion, brought on a choir of, of the Eric Whitaker singers, which was kind of a smaller group. And they were on the stage. And, and the point of that was that he was uh, going to share the, the piece Fly to Paradise with us. And Hal Leonard, which published uh, the piece, had provided everybody with copies of uh, that piece, Paradise, uh, uh, Fly to uh, Paradise, as well as Cloudburst. And so we had already sung Cl Cloudburst, and now we were going to Fly to Paradise. So at the time, Eric had instructed us that here's where you will sing as members of the audience. And there is a part in the, in the piece where over and over we sing the words, and all I want to do is fly, right? And yet his choir sang the other part, which I'm going to play for, for you in just a moment. Well, what was so remarkable about this, and I want you to keep this in your mind as you listen to this, okay? We had invited to this particular performance the choir students uh, from Butte County, California. This was the community which had recently right just before that, uh, lost just about everything, the whole town, um, right before to the, to the fires. And you may remember they were, the schools burned and, and homes burned and it was just a horrible, horrible loss. Um, and, they, and so the NAM folks said, wouldn't it be nice if we could invite these choir students to also be here for this? And so they had reserved this whole front of this area just for these choir students. And they were treated like VIPs and they were given t-shirts and the parents came and the administrators came and it was a whole thing. Well, um, we're all sitting around them and I'm guessing there may be 700 people in attendance for the NAM show plus the maybe hundred people from the school. So, you know, the, the video starts, right? And, and there's some amazing uh, vocal sol solos that you will hear, but, but, when we all started to sing, and all I want to do is fly to paradise, that one portion of the piece that you will hear, um, it, we were all singing live the same thing over and over together. And all of a sudden, we are realizing that the students who are sitting in front of us are from Paradise, California. And it was one of those moments that music just reaches into your soul. And you realize what is happening. And the place just started, everybody was in tears. The students literally hanging on each other, arm in arm, um, as they were singing. And to see this happen was, to be there was just um, an amazing thing. Um, the video starts unbelievably in kind of a grayish brown look uh, to it. And, and then eventually moves to a beautiful, colorful, paradise. And I think that was also something that we were all realizing all of this was coming together, you know, uh, that because their town was somewhat brown and gray from the fires. And all they wanted to do was go back to paradise, to the colorful, wonderful town that they had prior to that. So at the very, very end, what I wanted to share with you is that if we keep making music ourselves as educators, right? When we give ourselves to music making, it gives back to us so much. Um, this past Easter, I was reminded of the fact that the St. Matthew Passion has, for example, in it, 11 is it eyes. And why is that? What, did Bach really do that? He, he didn't just do that because, oh, I think I'll write. No, there was purpose. And, and Eric's piece had purpose, but the purpose this particular time was to soothe us through this particular piece. He didn't know that the kids from Paradise were coming. And, and this was all decided before the fires. It was just how music can help us do so many things in our lives and reach places that no other, other art form or other existence can. So with all of that in mind, I want you to enjoy um, Fly to Par Par From Paradise Lost, the musical that he wrote. Um, this is Fly to Paradise, and I want to just kind of go over the text real quickly with you. 
Um, the story is about, um, well, it's from Paradise Lost, the Milton. Uh, the story follows the last remaining tribe of angels marooned in a post-apocalyptic paradise as children and now uh, have grown into a young adulthood. Uh, in their fortress that where they have been cast down, they have created a militant martial society, always training, always training for the next attack, always afraid. One angel, Ecstasis, remains untouched by the brutal world in which she lives and dreams only of flying. And here's the text. And all she ever thinks about is being any other place than this, because she remembers having wings, but she has forgotten what it feels like to fly. A pen, she's forgotten the paradise of bliss. And all I want to do is fly. So enjoy this wonderful work by Eric Whitaker and I'll meet you on the other side.
It just got to me. Still does. <laughs> um, and you know that over this past year, it's been music that's gotten us through so many times. So anyway, here it is. I was so excited um, to have that happen and be there. And the photographer happened to grab this picture of me as, as it ended. And of course, you can see people had just leaping to their feet. Um, this person that's next to me with the glasses and the person next to him were from Hal Leonard. And it was just one of those times that when you hear a piece of music and it just takes you somewhere. So every time I hear it, it does, it still takes me there. And it's, it's just so important because it helps us deal with our emotions as they come up over time to deal with different things. But I'm going to move on because the why, this is the why. I mean, the why it puts us in touch with ourselves. The why it helps us uh, meet the world where it is and deal with it. But I'm gonna do, talk a little bit more just about other parts of music education that other than the notes, <laughs> because that's the why part of it, right? I mean, the notes help us get where we need to be. But um, school, for the most part for kids uh, is impressionistic in that when they go from class to class or, or from screen to screen, uh, typically they're being impressed with facts and information, uh, that kind of a thing, as opposed to with our in our music and arts courses where we have expressionistic kinds of experiences where we take in information and we express it back out. Uh, rather than just, you know, when was Bach born and all that kind of a thing. It's not a fact-based kind of a, a discipline, right? So as we think about the, the classroom, you know, because music really is one of those particular courses and our arts courses that really prepare kids for their, their future, it's also in this particular going to prepare them for their present. Because when we go back to school this fall, it's not going to be what it was. We are going back to a new future. And, and so we need to be more aware of their social and emotional place and think about that and not be so concerned about whether uh, we're, we're going to contest and going to you know, sing it or play a grade six piece or grade three or whatever it is. We need to foster these things, which we do inherently in our program. Uh, creativity, I call these the five C's, critical thinking, collaboration more than anything kids want to collaborate with each other they want to be back together and directors who have brought their kids back together have told me time and time again that their students come and they start crying the first time they see each other because they're so enamored with being back together with their friends confidence obviously i'm sure the kids confidence has been shaken a bit uh, over the past year and of course communication in the real sense um, and so therefore the music skills practice room is really a life skills practice room not just a music skills practice room although it is through the skill of music making that we we get them to this place so in talking about creativity you know the one thing I, I always think about is how creative are we really um, you know, we are reproducing what was on a page um, where the composer already told us what to do, even to the point of dynamics and all kinds of other things on the page. Um, if we're if we're doing that, how creative is that? Well, you know, creativity is really defined more as creating, you know, new and more new and more worthwhile ideas, even things that we didn't have in the past or know that we needed. And so here's an example of some creative thinker, Steve Wozniak, who invented, you know, the computer. And he and Steve Jobs, of course, are, are the founders of what I have in front of me right now. But the, that's a creative thinker. You may not know who this man is. His name is Marty Cooper, invented the cell phone, which, you know, of course, I have right at my side at every moment in life. And probably you do as well. So feel free to take a picture of any slide that you like along the way. Um, and there's Eric. And of course, what was his creative thing? He did this virtual choir thing. No one had ever done that before, before Eric. And of course, a lot of you have done it so successfully over this past year, which is so wonderful. So, I mean, we can be creative in all kinds of ways. It's just a matter of trying it and trying something different, being new, uh, discovering something that hasn't happened yet. Of course, critical thinking, you know, is our ability to, to discover something and see it through to the end and how do I get to this? Um, we are problem solvers by nature. We, our students uh, sit in our programs and at the same time that they're making music and playing their instrument or singing, um, they are 
balancing. So they're having to listen there and they're not only listening to the, the people next to them, but they're listening across an ensemble at the same moment as they're watching you, maybe even looking at the music at the same time and boom, boom, on the second, they're making all kinds of split decisions about what they are supposed to be doing uh, with all of those kinds of um, other kinds of external influences. So it's really critical thinking is huge. And that's something that they learn because they participate in our ensembles. Or even in elementary school, when they're playing uh, recorders or doing things as a group, we are kind of a group thing. Um, they find that where they sit in their place and where they belong. And as a result of that, they learn their place. And so it's a good thing. You know, we, we teach them how to solve problems. And I, I have to tell you that if we gave more of our issues to students to solve, you, you'd be amazed at how they come up with their solutions, right? So I'm sharing an example with you. I always share this because I think it's so great. Here's an example of a teacher who put out to the students, hey, let's, let's come up with a really creative idea for uh, getting people to turn off their cell phones and, or beepers or whatever um, in the um, audience when they come in as opposed to the typical uh, announcement and that kind of thing. So what do you think would work? So this is what the students came up with. <laughs> Just take a second to read that. <laughs> I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Because they do such crazy stuff because they, they are thinking differently than we do, which I love. So, um, just just lean on them. You can lean on them. They love that. They want to be a part of what you do, more a part of a decision-making uh, influence. So yes. Here's another problem solver, Harry Connick Jr., you know, of course, a terrific musician, but he also holds, holds his patent for um, original an original digital sheet music. Uh, there was a touch screen kind of thing, which this is before, you know, this is way early on, uh, before a lot of other people came along with something similar, like, you know, our uh, iPads and so forth. That, and what that did is it coordinates musical displays and literally on the spot in this particular uh, item, you could, he would say, okay, let's change this to this. And people could just reach up, boom, change it right on the spot. If they play outside, they didn't have music blowing around. They didn't need the clothespins on the, on the stands, all that kind of thing. It was just really easy. No need to print parts, all that. He, he thought of that. It's great. You probably know who this is. If you don't, you probably um, could guess who this might be if you don't know who it is. <laughs> Vic Firth, of course. So he played in the Boston Symphony and he just did not care for the mallets. Uh, he referred to, to them as, let's see, what does it say here? Warped utensils and implements not specifically designed for percussionists when he was having to play. So he started his whole business and company uh, to, to solve that problem and create something that didn't exist. And it certainly did, you know? Here's another guy that you may guess who this is. This is of course, Les Paul. He invented the solid body guitar because the audience where he played um, couldn't hear him in the back. And so he wanted to find a way to amplify the sound. And so he came up with this solid body guitar concept and amplification and look what's happened to the guitar. I mean, since this was invented. So, you know, these are all people who've been very creative and, and come up with those kinds of ideas that we hadn't maybe thought of, but they had a reason. And um, there's, there's nothing that's outside of the box. I mean, you know, somebody's got to invent the next new toilet brush or whatever it is. It's going to be somebody who's very creative. And it doesn't even have to be a musical thing. We know that. So, but when they are participating in programs that are in the arts, they learn to think outside the box. So that's the kind of thinkers we produce. And that's what we need. So collaboration, of course, uh, the ability to work effectively and respectfully with everybody, okay, so that we we know our place. I, I, I talk about that so much where, you know, our students learn that they can't just sing out a tune and they can't, or just sing out a place. I mean, they can sing out a tune. I know we know that and we have to work on that skill, but, um, but they don't elect to just sing out loud uh, and be louder than everybody, you know, in a choir, or they don't elect to just stand up um, in the middle of band practice and play something totally different. I mean, that is not what they learn to do in ensemble classes. We learn another life skill, which is collaboration, and especially in a marching band world. And this is an example um, 
Ohio State University many, many years ago went to a program where they did, um, well, kind of like picture shows and boy, did they ever become popular. And my husband and I happened to be at the game where they did their first picture show and it was to do a show about video games, all right? And so I snapped this little video that I wanna share with you. And if you've ever been a video game fan you'll get this but ah it's just, it was remarkable and the fans actually stopped leaving the stadium during halftime because they wanted to see what the band was going to put on the on the field which is great so here we go enjoy it's just a little clip So of course they went on to do shows with Michael Jackson and Superman and all kinds of things. And you may have seen some of those, but you know, in the big picture, uh, what this teaches us is about getting, getting along in the big world. And we could all use more of getting along in the big world, right? And by being in a program like that, you understand that, you know, if you do your part, that the whole can be so much better um, and we're better than the sum of our parts. So that is a perfect living example, a microcosm of what, we learn for the bigger world, for the life skill, right? And of course, confidence, the ability to handle every single circumstance that comes along. I'm gonna make mistakes on this presentation and I, I know that uh, it's gonna happen and I just don't worry about it because you know, I have confidence in the fact that you're gonna get the big message about the why out of this. And I just have learned to handle that situation and not be so judgmental on myself because I might, own toughest critic, right? We're all we're all our own toughest critic. And I want to say, take a minute at this time to say, when we go back, remember that the why is about the social and emotional needs of the students and not about whether we get a superior rating playing a grade six piece at, at contest this coming year or not. We, we will do the same amount of teaching and in the same fashion, but the focus has got to be on keeping an eye on the kids and providing for them a welcoming environment. You're gonna have your kids coming down to your class uh, probably more than ever before. And even if, you're, even if your numbers go down, don't get too bent out of shape about this. You know, Don't be self-judgmental. We've been judged since we were little kids playing in recitals through college when we were doing um, all of those, um, no, not recitals, but you know, all of those juries that we had to do. So, and going to contests after that. So. Now is the time to know in your heart when you've done the right thing. So here's an example of how music helped this young man when he had a big boo-boo. You'll love this. <laughs> You know, he could have been devastated and, you know, all of that, but no, he just made a big deal out of it and it was over. And that was just so great. I just love that video because it really exemplifies um, how our kids can just go with the punches, roll with the flow. That's how that all works, right? And of course, communication. And I think the very best video I have ever seen about communicating through music, the ability to hear something and, and, and it 
express it out to each other as musicians to the audience as they're listening and bringing them to you. The music goes over the, the stage uh, apron and out into the hall. Um, and it helps students learn how to express to one another uh, their feelings and it's that it's okay to express that. This is um, a video of uh, Maestro Dudamel conducting Mambo from West Side Story. And you will get just all caught up in the energy here. And it's like from the Simon Bolivar School. So these are school students. Uh, I believe it's a New Year's Eve performance uh, in Venezuela. And you're just gonna love it. So enjoy the fun of these kids. I'm playing it all the way to the end because it's just dynamic. Here we go. Wow, isn't that something? I mean, to tell you it, that to me, oops, sorry about that. Um, that to me is the most um, energetic, I think, video I've ever seen of kids making music. And, and the, it's so exciting that they had that spirit and they caught everybody in the audience. And it, it, was, just, it was just a great performance. And when that happens, oh my gosh, everything just, um, comes together and you and you will remember that performance for the rest of your lives in fact there I'm sure you have performances that you remember from when you were a young person so now I, I'm just going to kind of wrap this up by by talking about how we might all be able to come together everybody in your school to help our kids you know find their way back to the why and for us to think about it the one goal we should all focus on is to really ensure all right that we have continued active music making by addressing this kid's academic needs and their social and emotional needs. And in fact, there's a lot of money out there right now, ESSER funding that is specifically designated for exactly this thing, not for specifically music making, but for all, you know, addressing the students' academic needs. And of course, music is an academic subject and their social and emotional well being. So talk to your principal if you have needs to help your students get through this, what's going to be coming in the fall, okay? Um, and the why, um, so we offer a path to success for kids. In what way? Well, they have enjoyable, successful experiences in music making. Um, when they come into the classroom, uh, it, 
they all want to be successful. Students just don't, I mean, they want to enjoy having something they can be proud of. And so we offer that for them. So we offer a path to success. We also provide lifelong and very meaningful, deep memories. Uh, to this very day, I have kids reaching out to me on Facebook to talk to me about how they remembered this thing or the other thing. And um, it's, it's so rewarding. It's a little scary also because you wonder, wow, I, did I say that? <laughs> you know? And so what you say now, they're going to remember for a long, long time. But, but the memories that they will get as a result of participating in the programs, it will last forever. Um, and art, of course, self-expression when the kids really get to um, deal with the, their issues or, or to just experience being with friends and enjoying something together, like, like music, but it's, a, it's an express, self-expression um, is so important, especially this coming year. And of course we teach mutual respect. I mean, the kids respect us, the teachers, the music, the composer, um, the school. I mean, all of that, they're, they're fellow friends in our ensembles, because without respect, we can't have what we would consider to be a whole. And we all have to be on the same page emotionally to have this mutual respect. But we teach that as well. We have all of these things that we that they realize through our, our life skills practice room, right? And then, of course, we exemplify the meaning of trust in that we always let our students know that we have their backs. You know, it's okay to make a mistake, we'll fix it. Um, they, they, a lot of times they come to us and tell us things that they wouldn't share with their friends. They can trust us that we hold their confidence. So it's very important to think about these five things and you'll notice they spell out the word smart. And that's something we should always remember that the smart path forward is success, memories, art, respect, and trust. So I'm going to end today's session with showing you an example of one of our schools here in Clark County. I live in Las Vegas. We have a very large school district, <clears throat> about 500 and, oh, excuse me, 300, I think, and 3,500, 335, why can't I get this out? 335,000 students, there we go. We have approximately 364, 65 schools, 500 music educators. It's a huge district and a lot of music making. But this school really does exemplify SMART. And so I wanted to share this with you. And I'll see you on the other side. In a quiet town, just outside the entertainment capital of the world, there is a place where young adults learn to give 110% of themselves without excuses. It is a place where you learn about financial obligation, commitment, discipline, how to win, and how to handle life's challenges with grace and understanding. It is a place where music is also about physical education, art, math, language, history, reading, and science. It is a place where your heart and spirit become your purpose, and where going to high school takes on a whole new meaning. You learn. Dedication. Endurance. Trust. Adaptability. Teamwork, challenges, heart, perseverance, focus, achievement, strength, communication, friendship, fun, family, <laughs> laughter, memories, 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 memories.
Uh, so there it is. I mean, it's it's really amazing what we do. I mean, besides teaching them musical skills, uh, I put some pictures here of young kids enjoying music making and and having um, the opportunity because they are in our class to meet the world head on because we give them life skills. So at this point, I am going to turn my my uh, my screen back over and stop sharing for someone else to finish out the morning. Thank you, Marcia, so much it, for. It looks like we're already we're already there, right? I know we are already there. Thank you so much for a You're perfect so and uplifting beginning to our summit. Thank you so much.